Sweet, buddy. Okay. <laughs> so, no. what do you want me to? Uh, what do you want to talk about today, then? And what do I want to talk about today? Yeah. So last night we got up to the part where. Uh, last night we got up to the part where we got you your. We got you your, uh, your account, and now today is about uh, just basically depositing and, yeah. Okay. Um, what have we done so far? Hold on a sec, because I gotta close this. I don't like this on my screen right now. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Give me a second as well, too. Okay, good. So, what were we waiting for today? So, yesterday, I know we were waiting for your, um, we made your live account, um, so your money is already uh, just sitting in your live account. Now it's basically just for you to transfer your money towards your, into your live account. And once it's there, it will show up in your MetaTrader 4. And on MetaTrader 4 is basically where we're going to uh, be placing the trades. So we went over a little bit of it yesterday. Yeah, and then my brain went... Yeah. So exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, or uh, oh no, what did I write that in? Writing in codes, I don't even know where they're going. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I'm just signing into my MBFX. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Exactly. Right now. So now, how do I move my funds? How do we do that? So internal transfer. Yep. And then once you hit internal transfer. Um, you want to go from uh, wallet so, to MetaTrader 4. Okay, yeah, yeah. So pretty simplistic. Exactly. Now, do you want me to show what I'm doing? Because there's no information on here, whatever. Yeah, if you want, yeah. Um, you can share your screen. Because um, will my shared screen pop up where this graph is? Yes, it will. Try it out. I am sharing my screen right now, aren't I? No, no I was sharing my screen. You better host me. Okay. Yeah. Wells. <laughs> You're just gonna go with Morgan Wealth from now on, eh? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's just how this works too. Oh look at those cuties right there in that picture. Uh -huh. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> little yeah. love birds. Aw. Our little oh trip to God. Banff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you did you go to Banff and you see unicorn? Uh no, not yet. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I can't see Okay, so let me pop up your screen. Oh, shit. Awesome. Yeah, I can see your screen now. Okay, so you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. What kind of dogs do you have? You can hear that, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I have a American Bully and a Pit Bull mixed with a Rottweiler. Oh, sheesh. You like those uh, those big dogs. <laughs> oh, the wife does. I mean, I... Okay, yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's yeah. just... Yeah. Like, they're my dogs, but they're, you know, they're her, her babies. Yeah. <laughs> they're your dogs, yeah. but they're her babies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, they're they're meatheads, though. So, like, they just come at you hard and fast. Yeah. <laughs> just head, head down, tail wagging. Like, the one doesn't even like you. It just hugs you. Oh, okay, but yeah. it's like it tries to suffocate you because it like gets right on your shoulders and it's like Ugh! it just jumps on just you, yeah, on your face and you're just like no puppy, <laughs> and then yeah. the other one just like they just have their weird little quirks like the one will like come at you and then she'll turn and put her butt in the air and then you have to scratch it. Oh wow, okay, yeah, and yeah. You, you keep, <laughs> so like, like kind of like scratch your cat. butt, she, yeah, but yeah. like her, she just arches and keeps going and then like like almost does like a full on like ass to face kind of thing. Roll. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. She, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nuts. Yeah. Um, kid. <laughs> Sorry, I'm 
just doing something quick. Fine. Yeah, yeah, all good. You play a little bit of Warzone, eh? Why, well, how do you know? The SBMM Warzone on your, uh, on your save uh, links. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that shows you, like, where you rank and, like... Uh, it actually shows you the kind of lobbies you're into, like the different players you play against. Oh, okay, yeah. So, like, you know when you're getting stomped and you're in, like, a plat or legendary lobby or something. Then you know why, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I'm just not that good anyways. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, okay. sometimes I do some pretty sweet things and other times I don't. Yeah. So, that's just like, but I just play to have fun and bullshit and talk and whatever. Yeah, exactly. You know? Because I can't, like, I, when I start taking it too seriously, I just gotta be like, no, it's enough, because I'm gonna be poisonous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, sorry. Stop distracting me, Morgan Wealth. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> You're a funny guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, eventually I'm gonna like that name, and it's gonna stick. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know how this works, guys. <laughs> Better than Wi-Fi lifestyle, you know. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what that is. It's uh, I make, I make my living off of the Wi-Fi. <laughs> That's all I need. Oh, I mean, okay. Okay, get it. Yeah, it's uh, everything strictly off Wi-Fi. <laughs> I have my uh -huh. phone. I can make a living. I have my laptop. I can make a living. Yeah, uh, coffee shop, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, Wi-Fi lifestyle, buddy. <laughs> Wi-Fi lifestyle presented by Morgan Wealth. Ooh. Mm -mm. Ooh. <laughs> ooh, he says, ooh. ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? You yeah, know? exactly. It's not, it's not bad. Right? I'm telling you, Morgan Wealth is the brand. Yeah. <laughs> I need that money, money. Yeah. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Um... Okay, hold on, I'm just trying to hashtag my music right now. Yeah, no worries. Oh, that didn't sound good. I'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> the dog stopped barking. <laughs> Should be good enough. Okay, sweet. So, so I go. So what are we doing right now? Morgan so Wealth. now you go uh, internal transfer. No, Morgan Wealth. What are we doing right now? We're transferring money yeah. from our NVFX into your MetaTrader. To my MetaTrader, so that I can actually start purchasing my forex. Exactly. Okay. So I go to my accounts. No, I no. don't. Uh, internal I transfer. Internal inter transfer. I go from my wallet in my NVFX to my MetaTrader. Yeah. Select from wall. Okay. No. MetaTrader. Amount to transfer. Hmm. 98.60. 
Exactly. Request transfer. Now it'll take five minutes, but usually it's quicker than that. It took up to five minutes, so I just need to. It says done. Yeah. Status, so but... now you look at your uh, MetaTrader. On and, my phone. Yeah, and it should be there. Mad at Radio 4. Okay. Um, where would I, where would I see this money? If oh, you... I got balance of 98.60 if I click on the trade button in the middle, right? Exactly, yeah. Okay. So now on your MetaTrader, um, uh, so now on your MetaTrader, the first page is going to be your quotes page. Yep. Um, we went over that last night. That's where you're gonna see all your pairs and everything like that. And then yeah, we we'll, got a few odd ones, yeah. yeah. Odds and ends. And when it says low, um, that's gonna be the low end of the price and the high end of the price for the day. I'm assuming. Um, that's just yeah. Yeah. And then your spread yep. is basically yep. the difference. So when you buy or sell, there's gonna be a spread, um, and that's how the brokers make their money, is off the spread. So I like uh, this broker okay. as well too because their spreads are really really low. So when you see a spread of like uh, nine or twelve or thirteen or whatever, those are the pips. Um, so when you place a buy, it's going to be thirteen pips uh, above where you originally placed the buy, and if you place a sell, it's going to be thirteen pips below where you place the sell. So there's going to be that little spread, um, which is good to keep. An eye on because sometimes spreads are higher during. Um, I can actually see the spread right now. You know that, right? Okay. Um, go to your. Go to your. Uh... I need to stop sharing my screen, and you need to share your screen. Oh no no! This is on your MetaTrader on your phone. Oh okay. Yeah yeah. Meta so when you look at your apps, when you look at the pairs. Mhm. Mm um. Does it show spread? Underneath, underneath them. Uh no, it says oh, well low and high yeah. Um, and right beside the pair, does it say the spread underneath? Oh, spread 8, spread 8, spread 11. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so that's the spreads. So how does the spread work? So, let's say... Just give me one sec, I'll be right back. One yeah, sec, one sec, one for sec, sure. One sec. Yeah.
Okay, I'm back. Okay. I apologize. No worries, man. No worries. Okay, so I gotta stop sharing my screen and give you your screen, kind of thing? Uh, yeah, yeah. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, that's what we're doing because we're finished with uh, NVFX. Oh, I don't need to be on it anymore? Yeah, you don't need to be on it anymore. So I can close it? Yeah. Sweet. Stop share? Yeah, exactly. I can't see you though because you're streaming or you're recording. But... Oh, um. Just so you know. You can't see me because I'm recording? Mm hmm. Okay, but that's fine. Um, because I can yeah, still I see you. I don't need to see you. Uh, my coast. Oh. Sweet. Okay, so now the fun part begins. So I'm gonna show you kind of a little bit about spread and how it works. Um, so let's just go to a regular pair, um, just to kind of keep it easy. I still can't see your screen. Though. Oh, I forgot to share my screen. Give me a second. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Awesome, you can see my screen now? Mm, nope. No, I can. Okay, sweet. So, um, easiest way to explain a spread would be... Give me one second. Easiest way, I would say, to explain it would be... So, let's say price is... Let's look at a regular pair. Um, so let's look at like Euro. Okay. So right now price is at 1.20484. And let's, uh, on the broker, the spread is Um, is equal to 13 pips right now, okay? Oh. So when you buy the price, so when you buy, um, you gotta take in consideration the 13 pip spread. And so now when you buy, price is gonna be, you'll buy it at the price of 1.20497, if you wanted to buy it at this price, you're gonna buy it at this price. But if you wanted to sell, it's gonna equal out to 1.20471. So if you wanted to sell at this price, your broker's gonna... To... Oh, I have it mixed up. <laughs> So the pip is just the what the number is and you add 13 to it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You add 13 to it or you subtract 13 to it and that's what the way it's gonna happen. So when you buy- So when you buy, you take off 13 and when you sell it, you add 13. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Well, okay. Yeah, so if I wanted to buy it right here, mm -hmm. um, if I wanted to buy Euro right now, then I could expect to buy it up here. And if I wanted to sell Euro, so I'll just change this color to for blue for buy. And then if I wanted to sell Euro, I would actually sell it down here. And I'll change that one to pink. So you see what I'm saying? So Hold that's on. the spread. Price is right here. So price is moving. You want to buy? You want to buy on red, sell on green? Exactly. No. Um, yeah. Yeah. So if you were to buy it, price would be up here. So you'd be buying it a little bit higher of a price because of the spread. Uh, sorry, you'd be buying it a little bit lower of the price because of the spread. 
and mm-hmm. with selling you'd be buying it you'd be selling it a little bit higher because of the spread okay yeah so if we were to look at it at like a smaller time frame just so you can see with this candle so, so what I'm saying is why is there a pip spread though it's how the brokers make their money okay yeah so, so the brokers get the fraction yeah they get the fraction of the pip difference yeah because a pip is like a fraction of a cent correct um yeah it's the yeah it's a fraction of a cent yeah it's a fraction of a like it's a one one hundredth that's one tenth exactly exactly yeah right yeah exactly so um here i'll quickly go over uh pips and how to calculate them as well too here for you so where's the um give me one second let me pop something open real quick Yeah, I have like so much shit on here. It's crazy. <laughs> so I made this a while back and it's like a little cheat sheet for Forex. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. Okay, here we go. Um, so this is basically like the value of a pip and so what is a pip awesome yeah there you go so you'll hear pips locks basically when we trade is because that's how we calculate our profits um and so the pip is the number that only moves in the currency pair that we use so your usd um for example is at like a dollar seven and 87 but it goes up in the market and now it's at a dollar nine and 153 a uh, dollar nine and fifty three cents. So it had one hundred and sixty six pip move. Okay. Okay. So pips, the way you look at it is, this is just the main number, but this is a thousand pips, a hundred pips, ten pips, and one pip. Okay. Yeah. So it's four numbers after the decimal place is one pip. Yeah. Yeah. And then when it becomes a fraction of a cent. Exactly. Yeah. Where there's one zero seven eight. Oh, yeah. That was just the random. I uh, see what you're doing here. Yeah. That's the number above. Exactly. Exactly. One pip is the seven. Ten pips is the eight. Seven. And zero is a thousand pips. Exactly. Yeah. But zero is technically once uh, is 10 cents. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And 100 pips is one cent. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. 10 pips is 10% of a cent. Yeah. And then 7 pips is 1 100th of a cent. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You get it? Yeah. Well, I was like, you want pips? You want pips. Yeah. That's how that's how you calculate the profit is pips. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's uh it's another way as well too when just because we don't generally like to give out like uh, talk about how much money we've made, it's generally we mm-hmm. say how many pips we made, and the reason why is because um and the reason why is because of this right here because when you say how many pips you've made. Um, it'll determine uh, like lot size and everything like that as well too. So when you mm-hmm. use a standard lot size, that's a hundred thousand units. So that's ten dollars a pip. So if you caught one pip move at a standard lot size, you made ten dollars. 
but if you use a mini lot and you caught a uh, one pit move as well too that's only a dollar so and then if you use a micro lot that's a 10 cent move and you've only made 10 cents so when people say they've caught 50 pips 100 pips 200 pips 3000 pips or anything like that um, you can determine how much they've made based on the value of the lot size they use okay yeah so it's pip per lot size though Ex exactly exactly so like if i was like 10 pips per standard lot 10 pips per standard lot then you would have made 100 bucks wait mm -hmm. okay yeah yep. yeah you would have made 100 bucks quick math morgan you know what i mean fucking finance if you can't quick math yeah. exactly it's quick maths <laughs> yeah. quick math yeah throw them at them yeah exactly exactly yeah okay yeah. But now when you say standard lots. Yeah. And then you say a hundred thousand units. Yeah, so you don't how uh, much does a hundred thousand units cost? It costs the value of whatever it is you invested in. Exactly. And that's where so one unit is equivalent to one US dollar or Euro dollar. Uh oh, that's a good question. Um Because it would be Euro to USD, right? Yeah. So we would be trading in euros, correct? Correct. Into USDs. So when you invest, would the pit be in euro dollar? Ooh, that's actually a really good question. <laughs> uh, that's actually a really good question. Um, n no, because it would be whatever you're trading it into and turning it into Ex exactly it's not trading to turn it into it's more or less mark um saying um but well, regardless we have canadian dollars right? exactly regardless we trade oh. in canadian dollars so when we whenever we enter the market we're entering in canadian dollars saying that mm. we believe that the euro is going to be worth more than the u.s dollar and so mm. when we do that we get our profits in canadian so we're just telling the market, hey, we'll, uh, we believe Euro is going to be worth more. And I believe... So no matter what, yeah. my standard lot, my size... Uh, so my, my lot size is Canadian. Correct, yeah. And my pips are Canadian. Correct, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, yeah. And then... Because uh, we are investing in Canadian dollars. Exactly. But we're investing into like so we're buying euro when it's low and then when it goes back up above the USD, we're selling it to Ex make a little bit of profit. Exactly. And then right, and then we just follow the trend every time that happens. So exactly. when it goes low again, as long as we believe that these are going to continue to go low and then come back up higher above the US dollar. Exactly. 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 So, okay. That's what I'm saying. It just seems like the euro dollar has been above the us dollar forever oh exactly and this is where Thomas. the pips count and in, come into play because if you were to look at um the euro dollar mm -hmm. you see how it is right now so yeah it's still above the us dollar so we calculate how much we'll make in pips so let's say i believe the euro dollar is going to come up to here the new yeah this previous roof right so because i believe that it's going to come up to this previous roof now i'll just place a buy order and from here to here and i'll make nine pips so at the lot size that i use depending on the lot mm -hmm. size you use um you can make ninety dollars nine dollars or ninety cents thousand dollars or nine thousand uh if you had a hundred thousand units ex exactly exactly but in order to have a hundred thousand units you'd have to spend how much money um and that's where leverage comes into play so with leverage now instead of you forking up nine hundred thousand dollars um instead of you forking up nine hundred thousand dollars to place that order or whatever um mm -hmm. now the what the, will happen is for us small retail traders where's the text box um oh, here it is 
So now what will happen is your uh, $100 account mm -hmm. with um, quick math, your $100 account with the leverage of 500. Mm -hmm. Okay. With the leverage. Are you typing that out so you can put it in a calculator? Real quick? No. <laughs> well, yeah, probably. Your $100 account with a leverage of $500 is now equal to what? 50000 Mm-hmm. Correct. Is now a $50,000 account. So, oh. instead of paying using your whole account to risk that mm -hmm. trade, now to enter into a standard lot with proper risk management, um, they're gonna take, hmm, they're gonna use probably, let's say like $50 as collateral. Just, they're probably gonna use $50 as collateral. Okay. Now, now what's left in your account is $50. So $50 collateral, your as uh your fifty dollars your collateral, your what's in your account that they won't touch is fifty dollars. Now this fifty dollars is gonna move up and down based on the market. Okay. But why is that I don't understand how we got there. So your account my account has a hundred dollars, right? Yes. And then I get a leverage of five hundred which gives me fifty thousand. Yes. But the way you put Okay, so you can leave your room for the pip. So basically the 500 puts me at $50 though. Yes, um, if you were to use a standard lot size, if you were to buy 100,000 units, and that's where proper risk management comes into play. Um, so I wouldn't recommend doing a standard lot size on a $100 account unless you're a super, super aggressive trader. But if you wanna be like a conservative trader or a moderate trader, um, then you can use like the micro lots or the lots. Um, so the leverage gives you protection. Per it doesn't give you protection. It allows you to enter into the market with bigger positions, so you're not um, so you're not risking everything. If that makes sense. Here, give me one second. Um, <laughs> Because what I saw is I had a hundred dollars, but I was only allowed to use fifty of it. No, you're allowed to use the full hundred. Um, but, here. It's basically uh, what's the easiest here? Okay. Okay. What we gotta learn right now? Yeah. Because leverage is important because it can be your best friend, or it can be your, uh, it can be your best friend, or it could be your uh, your enemy when you're trading. Because if you don't know how to use leverage properly, you can blow your accounts, um, and that's not what we don't. That's what we don't want to happen, right? So, okay. so as far as leverage goes, one dollar is equal to five hundred dollars. Exactly. Yeah. Well. One dollar that you have is equal to five hundred dollars in the market. But don't I get bigger returns that way or no? You do get bigger returns that way, yes. But you well, also take loss. you also get bigger losses that way as well. That's why leverage can be your best friend, but at the same time will blow your accounts if you're not doing it right. So but can you lose and end up owing money? Um, yes, you can. Yes. Um, no, actually, what will happen is if it uses or up your, it just, yeah, okay, go ahead. Sorry. If it uses up your leverage, it's going to start taking it out of your, um, your account. So what happens is brokers now have margin calls. Um, okay. give me one second.
Okay, so what happens now is brokers have margin calls, uh, stop outs, margin amounts, margin level, and these are things that you're gonna have to learn. Um, but once you know them, it's gonna basically be in the back of your mind. Um, so a margin uh, basically is the amount required to deposit. So you deposited a hundred dollars is your is in your account. Now margin level is how much of a percentage is used uh, for your account. So if you have a hundred dollar account and you're doing proper risk management and you're only risking one to two percent of your account, then your margin level isn't a lot. But when you risk a lot of your account to make a trade, then you'll get a margin call. And if your trade goes in the negative past a certain amount, the banks will the brokers will automatically close your trade out because they don't want to risk your capital. They don't want to risk. So they will sell it for you. Exactly. Exactly. So that you don't owe them a shit ton of money. Exactly. Exactly. And then. So your and so leverage allows you to enter into a bigger position with the, with money you don't have. Exactly. Exactly. Right? Yeah. But now, do you still only get the profit based on the money you do have, and they get the rest of the profit? No, you get to keep all that profit to yourself. They only make huh. money on the spread. On the spread, which is the pips. Exactly. Yeah. They only make okay. that money on their spread. Yeah. But the brokers got to make money off the when it goes up too, though. Off some of it, no. No, they only make money off the spread. So a true ECN broker only makes money um, when you're really winning your trades. Um, they lose money when you're uh, losing your trades because what happens is uh, with brokers, um, when you they enter into the market, they're placing the trade for you. So you look at Tyler is saying uh, Euro USD is going to go up to a dollar twenty. Okay, yeah. so now I will place the trade for Tyler saying Euro USD is going to make a dollar twenty, and he knows that, and he has his uh, spread that he agreed to, and that's what we're going to make the money off of. So if the right. trade goes negative, the broker is losing money, but they just pull it. Exactly. Exactly. And they'll pull it before you owe them money, kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. But you could end up owing them money. You could, yeah. But that usually doesn't happen with the case. They'll take your major loser. They'll take your major losing trades first, and they'll close that okay. out. And then and now, who's my broker then, technically? NVFX. Okay. Yeah. So the NVFX has control over my trades if they start failing. Exactly. Yeah. So, so technically, they're tracking my movement through the MetaTrack tra Trader Four, because um, they're linked. Yeah. So yeah. if they can, and if I'm sure they have an algorithm program that goes through their website that decides whether, if it's losing too much, they pull it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you get that. Yeah, no, I get it. I understand. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just making sure. I mean, it's a lot to take in. No, no. Like, I like, I get the general concept of it. Obviously, it's gonna take me a few more times of like repeating it, and exactly, living it and learning it to uh, fully grasp the concept. But yeah, I get it because now, like, I'm. It's even like the terms we talked about the first day. Now I'm down to like like bull bearish, right? I know what a bull is. I know what a bear is, right? I know yeah. what they do. And that's something that I wanted right? to go over with you too because. I don't want you to get lost and confused in what uh, the markets really stand and then for, pips, right? When it comes to uh, pips, when it comes to forex, is how you make money. Exactly. Same with uh, trading. Yeah, exactly. Is how it makes money. Yeah. Right. Is the pips in the forex, or is that in normal stocks too? Is where you make your money is off the pips. No, in normal stocks you don't no. make money off the pips. In forex you make yeah. money off the pips. Um, and that's because pips because currency fluctuates so much and there's not usually a giant jump right unless exactly. something crazy happens right exactly which it has happened but those are long-term investments you do exactly yeah. like the whole canadian us dollar you would buy a lot and just leave it there exactly like how kind of um, like like what you would have done when the the, the the canadian dollar was on par with the american dollars you would have bought a shit ton of fucking american dollar exactly and then you would have left it for however many years till the canadian dollar fails again exactly yeah and now right exactly and now the u.s dollars like 70 of our cents is one dollar u.s 
So right, now so that's a thirty percent gain. Exactly. Had you done that. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So that those are so you have to look out for long term, and obviously in the forex, so there's a lot more short terms. Exactly, because the that, market like you can probably buy and sell same day and make a hundred bucks quick, right? Oh, exactly. Yeah. Or you can make twenty bucks, right? It just depends on the markets and what's happening, what's fluctuating, and and what you're watching and the algorithms you're seeing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's basically you pull up all the charts that you want to watch. You watch them. Yeah. See what they're doing in a twenty four hour period. And you wait till it gets or yeah, in a twenty four hour period. Yeah. And you wait till it goes low and then you buy it when it goes low because it's gonna go back up because there should be some kind of pattern within that that it, will dictate whether it continues to decline or incline. Exactly. Yeah. And then you'll have a pip spread of like so now what determines the pip spread is what I'm saying. The price is the pip spread Oh the spread? Um the from broker. the lowest to the highest in the day? No, the broker determines the price based on volatility in the market so volatility is and you said you either add or subtract exactly so what's volatile moving fast unpredictable yeah so when people so uh, the spread would be higher if it was more unpredictable correct exactly yeah and so, if it is predictable the spread is lower because that means more people can make money if it's predictable basically yeah so when there's lots of uh, people mm. trading throughout those sessions, um, it's going to be a very volatile market. It's going to be very, very fast moving. The spreads are generally going to be higher because those are times where uh, people, not even, those are times where people are investing. They know those are the busy times for that pair. So okay. now the spreads are going to be a little bit more because they Correct. brokers can make more money because more people are trading versus slower times there's going to be the okay. lower volatilities because not enough people are trading so they can't jack up the spread price the brokers are making their money off the pips off the spread with of the, the leverage that they're giving you they're making just their money off the pips uh the spread not with the leverage that they're giving you okay 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 yeah so let's say you leverage but your trade went down twenty dollars they're only gonna take your twenty dollars. They're not gonna take your hundred dollars. But if your trade went down six dollars, they're only gonna take the six dollars. Uh, the market's gonna take the six dollars. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. But if it goes down a hundred dollars, then they're gonna take a hundred dollars. But well, like you said, the way the spread works is only fifty dollars of that will move. Exactly. If you were to do so, once it dips below half of what you put in, then they take it away exactly so then they'll close yeah then they'll close the they'll, trade they'll close it out they'll close the trade for you so that you don't lose more than half exactly and is that that's just forex i'm assuming no that's uh yeah that's just forex indices and crypto so whenever you trade on metatrader 4 that's okay that's what's gonna happen nv doesn't allow you to lose more than half your money exactly but They're, what you can do is open another trade if you wanted to with that half exactly exactly that is left over Exactly. While leveraging it. And then, so let's say we start with 100. They only allow 50 of that to fluctuate before it dips below 50. Then they take it. So then when you put the 50 in, that you use 25 of that. Exactly. And it fluctuates. Exactly. Until in length. And if it goes under, then they take your 25. Exactly. And then you have 25 left. So 1250. And then you just keep going down. 625, it, right? It's, Three, it's, 275. Fucking, exactly. Whatever, right? The lowest so you, you can trade. Left. Yeah. The lowest you can trade with is $10. Um, because that's where the spreads come into play and that's when opening up a position and everything. So the lowest you can leverage is $10 in the market. Okay. Um, but other than that, or else you're, or else you're getting pips, like, but like pips of pips. No, because even there's nothing you, left to get after $10 is what I'm saying. Like but, if you go lower than $10, you exactly. couldn't even, you couldn't make money off a pip of a pip exactly exactly like a pips pip squeak right let's say exactly a pipette is what they're called a pipette yeah. okay so a pipette is that little number you showed me that just kind of floats around that's five decimal points over exactly exactly yeah and that's not worth shit that's not worth shit yeah yeah okay yeah see i listen motherfucker yeah um, uh, it's nice yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah i'm retaining it's it's hard this isn't easy man and i get why people don't fucking do it because we still are just scratching the surface right now oh exactly exactly and this will kind of give you like a little cheat sheet of little terminology or anything like that 
um, but you but you get that right yeah why are you gonna send this to me too you want it you want I mean, it to that's go over up to you man yeah, yeah I can I send know. it to you um, this is just something you're I my master yeah I, right. I could uh, <laughs> like, I, I can't say that on stream <laughs> <laughs> Edit. <Cut. laughs> you're my master that's funny <laughs> but, i literally said massa but oh yeah, massa yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, we ain't live streaming our who knows maybe you want to throw that in there but it's, you know it's yeah. okay it's yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> but yeah here's um kind of the best times you can look at trading too so depending on your schedule um, one and two in new york oh, okay oh so this gives you like a layout of where the places are exactly so so like sydney australia would be the 12 and one in the morning london would be so london Amos, so Lond it's time zones then time zones exactly sydney and mm -hmm. tokyo are usually australia starts at four tokyo starts at seven and they go up till uh midnight um, I but believe. now, what are the hot ones you want to watch? Anything big? Um, depending on your pair, depends on the session that you're going to trade. So if you're going to trade anything that's uh, GBP, Euro, um, or anything like that, um, you definitely want to trade them during the London session because that's when Which they're going to make their those moves. Those would be important to do, correct? Exactly. And then anything... Those are big players, right? Like, you don't really trade smaller players exactly. too often. Because yeah. I would imagine the volatility in these smaller players is insanely high insanely high and the spreads are ridiculously high as well too because like you don't know what's going to happen from like if you like can you because you can do from any country to any country exactly so you can do like uh ruples to mexican uh coin to the mexican peso and those Jeez, ones you can mexican <laughs> coin come on dog Let's, <laughs> jesus christ yeah man. my bad but like to the pesos and those ones so would what's be a like, ruple what's a uh, ruple which one's that um indian coin Okay. Yeah. Just, yeah. I don't think you could say Indian either. <laughs> well, India's coin, or I don't know, <laughs> Middle East. <laughs> I'm going country by country. Middle Eastern currency. Yeah, for... the Indian's currency. India's currency. Oh, India. good. <laughs> India's it's currency. They get holes over here. <laughs> yeah. Just, just so you know, before you do it, you're not allowed to call the Chinese Orientals. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> my buddy did that in a Zoom call. He works for like an energy company. Yeah. <laughs> And he said something about the Orientals doing something. And one of the guys in the room was like, what are they building a fucking railroad? <laughs> wow. He was, he was like, oh, shit. He was like, yeah, I, didn't even, I thought I was being politically correct. And yeah. He's like, he's like, HR, Sandra, I'm on my way. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but no, I, I don't like speaking of being politically, politically correct. I don't even oh, know. Wait, the of black, yeah. Because. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't even know what to call them to be politically correct. If we're going back to India and in India, I would think because uh, they're uh, Asian, actually, they're know. Asian, but like they're Middle East Asian or like Lower East Asian. Or... Indians are, are they Asian? Yeah, it's it's in the continent of Asia, but like it's in the no, lower. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. But so it's like I I don't know it's considered politically correct to say that so <laughs> yeah anyways um yeah so depending on the pair that you trade also yeah. depends on the time zone that you want to trade it and take a look at it um and so yeah interesting so yeah so these are just good times to watch where they'll start fluctuating and doing good things right exactly exactly yeah. So good times to watch. Pick a pair that you like, that works in your time zone, that works in your favor, and just master that pair, right? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, so these are the top currencies and their nicknames. So you're going to get, like, the Aussie, the dollar. Um, you didn't even put the ruples up there, bud. <laughs> no, because these are the top currencies. <laughs> um, yeah. Fucking motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Right? So we yeah. got a bunch that have a dollar, which is New United States, New Zealand, Australia, and Canada. Yeah. And then what is so? What is the Switzerland one called? Like France? Switzerland. Uh, Switzerland. It's called the Swissy. But why is it CHF? That's their symbol. Um, I don't know why they have it. Oh, it's um. Ah, uh, I totally forgot about that one. Um, 
it's uh it stands for something um give me one second here let me let me find that out here for you chf oh there's a porn site yeah it stands for confederation helvetica franc franc yeah confederation confederation helvetica franc yes yeah, but it's a, it's a french currency no it's a swiss Swiss currency. Well, no, it's Swiss. Yeah. I understand that, but why did it say, oh, Frank, Swiss Frank? Yeah, the Swiss Frank. Yeah, the Swiss so Frank. So it's called the Swiss Frank, but it's also called a Swissy? Why is it called? The is Swissy just is just like a trader in, term? Yeah, it's trader term. These are but trader it's terms. called a Swiss Frank. Yeah, Swiss Frank, yeah. And then the Euro dollar, right? It's called the Euro. Euro. The Euro. Pound, pound, yen, yeah. Yeah. And these are all the major players. Exactly, the major players, yeah. So these are the ones that you're like, pretty much guaranteed to make money off of um as long as you watch them properly and you you pick the right one to the right one exactly if you watch like them. if you're economically aware of these countries and how their dollars work exactly you don't even have to be news plays a factor in it if you want to be a uh a you just gotta get good at watching the charts right yeah, exactly you just gotta get good at watching the charts train your uh, eyes well, yeah because more so news is gonna tell you if there's a giant spike that's going to happen but the spikes should be pretty generic right exactly Once you learn how to how to watch them exactly they're not um they're not going to make a giant uh a giant dent in the market but they're going to make a minor ripple in the market right yeah and usually there is one country or another that does have a boom at some point where the dollar does end up being worth more exactly and- kind of like when canada had our boom right like yeah. and, and Alberta was crazy construction, all that, all the time, right? Stuff exactly. like that, right? It's exactly, 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 yeah. And then, yeah, we went over currency pairs, we went over pips. So, yeah, so the first number is the base, um, which was my bad. I completely uh, made that mistake. Um, so the first number is the base, the second is the quote. So we'll, we'll just disregard what I said the other night, but like, yeah. The first pair is called the what base. What do you mean? So, the first pair is the the first th- three set of letters <laughs> oh, is the yeah. base the pair. The base is quote. Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But that makes sense. So the base is what you're trading into. So as that's written euro to USD, that means the euro is worth 107 to a USD dollar. Exactly. Exactly. Perfect. You got it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. That's what made sense in my head. You just fucked me up. Yeah, my my, my bad. <laughs> and then stop losses and take profits. Um, so we'll go over that real quick. So um, a stop loss is what the company will step in. No, is that it's what, a what stop loss is? it's what you, a stop out is what the company will step in. A stop loss is what you put in for yourself. So in your MetaTrader, it'll look like this. Um, so. This one was for the pound yen. Um, so you, for this pair, I did a market execution. So I wanted to, uh, I wanted to buy it right there and then. Um, so the okay. red number at the bottom is going to be my stop loss. So if price gets down to one thirty dot eight five four, you sell it. No, that's when it's going to take me out of the market. But yeah. if price goes up to one thirty one two fifty, that's when I want them to. That's when I want to take my money and my profit. So I want to only But does lose. it do it automatically for you? Yeah, it does it automatically for you once so you set you these parameters. So when you set a stop loss and a, what's a TP? I take profit. Okay, so a stop loss and a take profit. You can set your own parameters. Exactly, yeah. So you don't even have to sit there and hit buy sell. Exactly. You set your parameters and you walk away. That's yeah. what I'm saying. So the green is when you sell, the red is when you buy. Um, no. Oh, no, sorry. No, 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 sorry. Never mind. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. The, the, but the green will technically sell on its own. Um, is what you're saying. Yeah, it'll Because close. that's how you make profit. Correct? It'll close the that's order. It closes. Yeah, it closes when you the sell, order. Well, when you sell, that's closing an order, no? No. Um, no. When you sell, um, you can still make money. So in the first example, I'm buying uh, GBP, JPY, and yeah. the green is where i want my take profit to be and the red is like me saying to the market hey if it does go below here 
I only want to lose this much of my money. I don't want to keep yeah. losing it. So that's yeah, so this. you don't want to lose shit all, basically. Exactly. But you want to gain a lot is what you're looking at. So if it does happen to go to 131.250. Then it closes right, the would order. Be a, and, and that would be a pip of like 1,000 something. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Am I? I'm correct, right? You're correct. That? It's yeah. Like One thousand seven hundred and eight. Yes. The pip there. Um, looking at JPY pairs. Um, no. Um, that would be looking at JPY pairs. They move the decimal places over, so it would be a hundred and um, it would be a hundred and twenty. A hundred and give me one second. Uh, so 131.250 minus 130.958. It would be 29 pip move. A what? A 29 pip move. So a 30 pip move. Because when JPY pairs, because the yen is calculated different. Um, let's see. Okay. The yen looks... The yen, um, their dollars are more... It isn't like one dot. It's not like a dollar seventy. It's one hundred and thirty yen. So yeah. their decimal places are just moved over uh, two extra spaces. So you do the exact same when it comes to calculating your pips. So your pips uh, are just moved over. Yeah. So the yen is on the right. So you. So what? Yeah. So any yen is just like it's oh, basically. Okay, so it's a buck thirty. Yeah, it's a buck thirty exactly, but they present Nine, their five, numbers. Eight. Yeah, exactly. One, they present their numbers one thirty. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay, because that is uh, sorry, I thought that was the GPB and the JPY for some reason, but it's not. That's just JPY up there, the yen. It's no, which it, is the one thirty ninety one and the one thirty ninety five eight, right? Exactly. So I'm saying that those the, are both yen, right? That uh, I'm looking at. You no, know, it's pound versus yen. So I'm saying one dollar in the pound is going to be worth dollar uh, thirty one in yen. One dollar, okay. Yeah, but they also move the decimal place over for the. Yeah, and if it's if it has Great a Britain. JPY ending, they move the decimal place over. Yeah, even for the J or the GBP, the base is always going to be one. So disregard that the base pair is going to be always one. Um, so that's okay, well, going to be. What's the one thirty point nine one and what's the one thirty nine five eight? That's the spread. Yeah. Of the yen. Yes, that's the spread. So if I were to buy. So those are both yen. Yeah, those yeah those numbers are those, both, both yen. Both those numbers are yen. That's yeah. all I was trying to ask. Dude. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Both those numbers are yen. Yeah. Both those numbers okay. are yen. Okay. Yeah. And then because the base is JPV, it. Exactly. Okay, this GPB, it stays as one. Yeah. Right? And then the, the 130, you would move it over to uh, 1.3. Ex exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you wouldn't really. But just yeah. for yen, right? Does, that, does anything else do that? Ruples? Uh, no, no, like no. That? no. Pesos? Just, no, just JPY. JPY is the JPY only one. JPY is literally the only one that you move it to two decimal spaces over. Exactly. Exactly. And that's how they but calculate. Hold on, yen's worth more than GPB? No, one G one GBP is worth a uh, one hundred and thirty yen. Okay. Yeah. So it's like seventy cents to the dollar kind of thing. I got you. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense now. That's why I was saying I'm looking at the numbers on screen. I'm not trying to add anything else that isn't on screen, right? Exactly. Exactly. So you're overcomplicating it. I'll try to keep it simpler. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know what you're saying, but I'm like, yeah. See, I'm completely layman's, so I'm just looking at right what's in front of me. Yeah. And you're adding in, like, the base number and all that shit, which I can't even see on the screen, right? Yeah, you can't see. But it's just good to know that the base number is always one. And the only reason no. I'm saying that is just because, yeah. You're not wrong, but if I can't see it on the screen, I'm not going to ask you questions about it. Okay, awesome. So from what we see, <laughs> okay, it's good that I know that because from what we see on the screen, can you tell yeah. me what my take profit is, what my stop loss is? Uh, well, your stop loss is the, it would be 131.25 and your take profit would be 130.85. 
what kind of order am I placing? Ah, uh, bye. No. Or no, uh, no, hold on, hold on. I take profit order. A sell order. A sell, okay. Yeah, so I'm selling this. I'm selling this you market. You're confusing the <laughs> fuck at me. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay, so the green is the sell point, man. Yeah, so that's when I want. I'm saying that uh, GBP, JPY, is going to be worth a uh, buck um, thirty or 130 yen. And, and if it does go up to 131 yen, then you're going to close my order and I'm going to lose that 29 Okay, so this pit. is a different order that we're looking at here. Exactly. Exactly. I had to sneak that one in on you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, so you just flipped it on me then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so this is the first order we are looking at. <laughs> Which is what? A the, buy order? Exactly. The second one is the sell order. Exactly, yeah. So you have to do both of those? When you when you set it up or you can pick one or the other? You can pick one or the other. Um, so you can either buy it or you can sell it. I just did both just to give you an example of where the numbers would be. Okay, but yeah. in order to do the sell order, you have to have already bought it. Um, nope. Right, like you're setting, so you're setting something that automatically buys for you? Yeah. And is that what this is? Yeah. Like, so you don't have to push any buttons ever. Exactly. I just set this up. You're, hit you're buy. setting this up and it will buy once it's at 130. No, nope, it'll buy right now. So this is a market execution order. So you'll mm -hmm. see at the top, it says market execution. Oh, okay. So your market execution. So we're at 130.958. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. So that's what we're buying at currently. Exactly. And then if it goes to 130 or 8.854 or below, yeah. with the hits there, it'll automatically sell or it'll close out the account. It'll close out that trade. Okay. And I'll lose and then, 29 pips or whatever it is. Right. So it'll just close it out if it decides to do that. Yeah. But then 131.250, if it gets to there, then it's gonna it'll sell yes it'll sell that position and i'll keep the profits okay so it'll sell the position but then will it rebuy as well no it won't or is that why you have to set up a sell order as well that's why no um no so i'm trying to look at it from a stock's point of view and keep it simple um mm -hmm. so in layman's terms it's like a rice cooker um, these are okay. the times. So once the rice cooker is ready um, and the rice is cooked perfect at 131.250, it's going to stop. It's going to close the order. I'm going to keep my money. Okay. But let's okay, say... So you keep your money. Yeah. But then you can set up another market execution again. Exactly. And then I can set up the market execution if I were to, let's say, you know what? I want to take this trade going up. And I want to take the trade going down because I know it's going to go up to this roof level. And yeah. then I know it's going to go back to the to the floor. So then what you could do is now you can open up a sell position too and go, you know what? Awesome. So it hit the roof. Now I want it to hit the, the floor. So now you're going to open up a sell position and you can make money as it's going down. But if it does go past the roof, it's going to close me out and I lose X amount of pips. But if it goes down to the floor, I'm going to make money as well, too. Because you'll be selling. Exactly. I'll be selling. And then, and then rebuying. I'll be shorting the market or selling the market. Yeah. So you'll be selling it as it goes down and then buy it back when it goes back up again. Exactly. So I'm making money both ways. But you have a cap on how high you can buy it back up to. Um, you can set that cap for yourself. Yeah. So, you can, so that's the green number, right? Exactly. So that's the cap. Is your buyback cap? No, is your profit cap. So if price goes down to that number, that's the profit I want to take. So let's look okay. at... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So if it goes down, and then if it goes up to 131.250. Yeah. So here, let's take a look at the chart. You're going to sell? Yeah, so... Let's take yeah, a look at then you would make yeah. profit there. Exactly. So let's take a look at this one here. Um, so you all already see this move. But mm -hmm. uh, so let's say we go over here. This move hasn't happened yet. And price, you see this giant wick and you're like, you know what? This is the roof of 
This is the new roof right here. Yeah. And this is the floor. So I want to sell this pair. So let's see. So I want to sell it here. Mm -hmm. And I want to take it to here. But if it does go past it, I only want to lose this much, right? So that gives you your risk reward ratio is almost like a three to one. So I'm risking five pips to make 16 pips. Yeah. And as price plays. So what did you buy in there then? That's what I'm saying. I bought a sell, I bought a selling position. I bought a short position. So what is it that you're trying to understand? We've been out buying a selling position. So I'm shorting the Euro USD. So I'm shorting Euro. I'm saying Euro isn't going to go past here right now. It's going to come back to the floor. So it's not going to go past where? Um, here. It's not going to go past here. Okay, but where did you buy in? I bought in here at this candle. So let's okay, go back. So you bought. Oh, God, you just got rid of the graph. Yeah, but let's go back um, just so we can take it nice and easy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you're buying in where? Okay. This is where we need to start. Yeah. So you see this move here. Mm -hmm. And then I see this candle happen. Yeah. Okay. So now I am going to buy a short position or I'm going to sell the market right here okay and i want to have this i want only okay. i only want to lose let's say to the floor is seven pips i only want to lose seven pips but i'm risking seven pips to make 17 pips okay so my risk to reward is 2.5 2.46 but 2.5 and now you, but let you only make money if it goes back up to the ceiling, correct? No, you can make money if it goes down to the floor. So I'm going to make 17 okay, see, this tips. This is where I'm confused. Okay. Have, okay. Have you watched the you movie? You understand? Yeah. Have you watched the movie, The Big Short? No, maybe. It's about the guy who shorted the United States uh, economy and made all that money saying that, you know what? The economy is going to collapse. And he was... Uh, selling shares saying the economy is going to collapse and then the economy collapsed and he made money okay. so you're selling it high and you're buying it low so this is where trading is different from stocks because in trading you can make money if price does this uh, give me one second you can make money if price does You can make money if price does this in trading, so it goes up, or you can make money if price goes down. Okay, see, that's where I'm confused, and that's obviously the stuff. I don't understand how you make the money when price goes down, because if you buy into something, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's um. How do you make money if the price of that product that you bought goes down from what you bought? Or is that where your leverage plays in? That's where your leverage plays in. So, um... It's it doesn't it's not really where your leverage plays in. Um, what's the best way to explain it? Um, yeah, it's uh, you're basically out. You're basically saying the you're outbidding the buyers. So in this case, you're saying that you're facing somebody else on the end of the screen. Okay, so every yeah. time you place a buy, somebody's placing a sell. Every time you're placing a sell somebody's placing a buy so oh. at that point um what's happening is as price is moving up and you're going up with the price and you're buying it so let's just finish this example real quick and then i'll show you um so price is going down and oh. all these people that bought price here so all these mm -hmm. people that bought price right over here, um, if you can see, all the people that bought the market here saying that the market's going to go up, but you 
looked at your chart and you're like, uh uh, the market's gonna come back down here, you're making money off their orders. If that makes sense. How do you buy a selling position? This is what I don't understand. Like, I understand the up and the incline. Yeah. I understand the buying and the selling. I don't understand the selling and the buying, I guess. Okay, so. Like, I don't understand how you can. Because if you. Like, I see where the line is where you're saying you bought, right? Yeah. And now price came down here. Or let's see how far it came down. Yeah, so price came down here. Hit my, it hit my profit level. It came down to the floor. So now I've made from my entry to where my profit level is, I've made 17 pips. But how? So we're calculating, there's no dollar value we're calculating, we're calculating the pips that are moving. Yeah, the dollar value depends on the lot size that you place. So back to the lot well, size. What I'm saying is declining, how does that? Because everybody, all the buyers, all the bulls said price is gonna uh -huh. go up and they were placing buy orders. But you were the smart one who was like, no, this is the maximum, price is gonna go back down and it sells. But now that you've but what seen- what I'm saying is if you bought in at the maximum, how do you make money selling when it goes down? Because everybody's buying it and it goes Even down. Even though it's going downwards? Exactly. So you can make money. So, so they're still buying it? No, because they'd be buying it at the price as it drops, correct? Yeah. So then you'll have position traders who only look for buy setups. So now when price Interest. goes but, here, back I don't to understand. the what I'm not understanding is you bought it, like let's say you bought it at $3, that's where the top of the the red and green meets together, right? $3? Like, like I don't know, I'm not. I'm just using like a reference, I'm not gonna use what's okay, on okay. the screen. Yeah, so let's go, let's go confused. reference, okay? So, okay, so like... <laughs> okay, so let's go reference like this. Um, we wanna go down, right? Down, because yeah. we're, we're selling, so down lower. Down lower? What are we doing here? Um, I'm just going, I'm just making it super, super simple for you to see, okay? Well, no, I can't, I can't. So this is like a long graph then. Yeah, this is just- Not like a short term. So what I'm saying is if you buy at the one. Yeah. Right? So you buy then... here. Um, okay, so you buy here. Yes, this is where I'm confused. So I'm buying there. Yeah. And you're telling me that as there's a decline all the way down to the two. Yeah. Right? If I'm selling on the way down to the two, how am I making money if I bought in at higher? Because you're not buying in at the one because you're going to be, because buying in at the one, you're going to lose money because price came back down. And that's why you have your, that's why you have your, your stop loss. So if price goes down, Let's say but you're saying I make money. Yeah, you make money going both ways. You make well, money. How do I make money going down? This is why this is I don't understand that. Be I don't understand <laughs> how I possibly make money going down. That doesn't make sense because if I bought in at the one. Yeah. And it's, the value of that depreciates going downwards. How does that you make money off make the money? depreciation? Because you're that saying doesn't make, that doesn't compute in my head. That makes no sense to me. Okay, no worries. Then <laughs> this is the problem I'm having. Like I can't even <laughs> fathom making if money. If you buy at a number, goes down. <laughs> yeah. and if it's depreciating, yeah. How is my profit? It's um. Inflating? How do I? How do I say this? Um, have you ever played a like an example that comes into my head is um, have you ever bet on sports? No. Okay. Well, do you know what sports betting is like? I have no idea what it is, but like, it's um, there's spreads and shit in that too. Which, well, I don't look at it you, like you, that, but I look at it yeah, like uh, uh, you're saying this team is gonna lose and you make money yeah. off of it, while everybody who's saying this team's gonna win is losing money, right? Because you yeah. make your money off of the people who said it's gonna win. Yeah. Okay. So same thing that happens is uh, the, you have the home team, which is going to be the Euro, and you have the away team, 
which is going to be the dollar. So you're essentially um, placing a trade saying the dollar is going to go up. I expect it to keep going up. But some people are saying, no, I expect the dollar is going to keep going down. So, so then is there two conflicting markets at play at once ex- where, where there's a euro to USD and a USD to euro that completely correlate with each other that create the graph? So I need to watch both graphs in order to make a calculated decision. Exactly. Or you can look for nice setups where you know price is going to go up. If you're only a position trader who looks for buy setups, then what you would do... Then I would, I would watch the Euro USD. Exactly. And look for a moment where you think the Euro is going to be worth more. Right. Because buy being a position trader as a buy trader exactly. seems to be like the most easiest layman's way to do shit. But it sounds to me like if you could figure out how to do the sell position shit and make money off of a depreciation of something, which makes no sense to me still. Yeah. I'd like to clarify that. Yeah. But if you can do that, then that's how you'll make even more money if you can if you can become diverse and do both. Exactly. If you can know when to spot the market going up and you place a buy and then know when to spot the market going down and you can place a sell. That's what I'm saying, but I'm th- uh, what in my head, all I'm thinking is that the average person isn't going to be doing what you're telling me to do, which is to, to get the money off the depreciation. No, I'm telling you to do both, but in this no, way... No, no, but what I'm telling you is the average person isn't thinking like that. They're only thinking what my brain was thinking in the beginning, and they're saying that makes no sense to make money off of depreciation. Exactly, exactly. The average person isn't going to understand what you're trying to explain to me because I don't understand it. Exactly, yeah. So... It's the average person is only going to think you only make money when the markets go up. But no, you can make money uh, trading the markets going both ways if the market were to go up or if the market were to go down. So you can play you can play the you can play the you can play the um, the market game. And if you want to know how do we explain this to me so my brain understands? Um this is what I want to know. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like a music way to play it. <laughs> I'm trying to play a music way to play it. Like uh, I, I, I kind of understand the concept of the sports where like it, essentially it's groups of people bidding against each other and somebody's going to lose. Exactly. Um, right. I understand that concept. Yeah. But I don't understand because I'm my brain is stuck on at like, let's see where the one is there. Yeah, that that's where you bought in, so that's worth four dollars, right? Yeah. And then and you can... so the two, let's say, is worth two dollars. Yeah. And if it's going down and I'm selling towards the two, how am I making money? <laughs> is it because uh, like the people that are buying whatever I'm selling are not buying it at higher; they're buying it at lower than I bought in at. Exactly. So, uh, what's like I I. I can't answer that question to the point where I can be like, yeah, um, I know I am trying to find a way to under- make you understand it because it is a difficult question in the sense of how like the average person when they think, oh, I'm going to make money when the market's going down. No, it's because you're, um, how did he explain it? You're, um, you're selling it to them at a higher price. So... Oh, I'm still selling it at what I bought it in at. Exactly. So let's say I go to sell you. Or do I sell it at a higher than what I bought it in at? How does that make sense? Here, let's say let's say you bought a guitar for 300 bucks, okay? <laughs> you went out, you bought a Fender or whatever, or whatever those fancy guitars are at $300. Now mm-hmm. the price of that guitar is $400. But let's mm-hmm. say a new Fender um, came out. And that drops that price at two two hundred dollars. Okay. Yeah. So three to two to four. Or but you three sell to four it. To two. Yeah. But you sell that to somebody at three hundred dollars, and you saved yourself that one hundred dollar depreciation. But how do I get that money? What do you mean? It just goes into your account. But how do I, but you said three to four to two. Yeah. So f- here, so but I bought at four. No. So let's say, let's go up to zero price does here. You don't want to buy at, okay. You don't want to buy here because, okay. What's uh what's another way? Supply and, de- supply and demand is a good way to look at it. 
So a way I explained this to my girlfriend was she buys her perfumes. Her perfumes are usually going for around like, uh, sometimes they're going around like $10 when they're on sale. And when they're not on sale, they're at 20 or $30, okay? So now for the people, for now for them to, for the supply to increase where people, where they want the demand to increase for people to buy it, they're gonna drop the price back down to $10. So they people will buy it and as they buy it, it's gonna increase the supply and then they're gonna raise the price higher. So simple supply and demand. Exactly, simple supply and demand, yeah. So you put it on sale, a shit ton of people buy it. You take it off sale, people don't want to buy it, but they want it. So they're going to bring price back put, to it. Then you wait long enough until people really, really want it, and you put it on sale again, and it'll spike higher than the original sale. Exactly. And essentially, it's like fishing. You take a little bait, you throw it in. Exactly, exactly, yeah. So you're just dangling bait until the market does what it wants. But I still don't understand stand because i'm not buying at the one i'm buying at the the zero line like like as if i buy it at the zero line that yeah. makes sense so let's but say you're telling me i'm buying at the at the one knowing that it's gonna go down so i have do i have to wait for the next spike in order just to sell give me once give me one second my headphone just died um Uh, can you speak? Yes. Awesome. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. I speak as a word. Okay. So I'm trying to find the best way to explain this to you. <laughs> um, uh. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the... Yeah. <laughs> it's... Uh, it's it's an odd concept when you think of making money as price goes down and making money as price goes up. But most people only know that like investing or holding or long term investments, you buy at a low price, you hold it, you wait for price to get up, and then you close your position. It is usually what investments are like, right? So or you can sell part of it when yeah, it goes up. Exactly. And hold on to other parts of it. You don't have to close out exactly right you can sell some to make a little bit at that time right exactly exactly so i'm assuming that's how people live off of doing this right is they don't ever sell out completely unless they're forced to um or unless they know that this is the cap of what something's hitting and then they'll sell out completely right and then start investing into something else exactly yeah but that depends on the product yeah exactly obviously. exactly but um with uh with this one here what happens is because you would like you can sell out a little bit make your profit and then reinvest it into the same thing too correct exactly or i guess you could just close out and then reinvest as well exactly exactly so if you're only going to be looking for buy setups in the market then you would know that this right here is the roof this is this is as much as price is going to get mm-hmm and price is only going to go up to here. And I know that um, because I see price doing this. So you would look for buy setups here and then you take your profit here. And then you look and then for, you would set up a sell account at the top and then wait for price to get down to the floor. Take a and then you can so you can make money both ways. Exactly. But I still don't understand how you make money while you're selling. <laughs> it's um. So it's people that think it's going to go back up that are buying. Yeah, but it goes back down. But wouldn't they be buying at the price as it goes down? Um, no, because they have their stop losses set up. So let's say price does something like this and it comes back down and price looks, it breaks the previous roof and mm -hmm. people think, oh yeah, sweet. I'm going to keep buying price 
But Price is like, haha, JK, fuck you, we're going back to the floor. So they're buying on they're gonna the decline. Exactly. But your price goes down too when you're selling, does it not? What do you mean your price goes down too? Oh, crap. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm confused. Um, what is it that uh, you're confused about? Like, what is making it like this? <laughs> uh, it, it literally makes no, it doesn't, nothing is registering in my mind about how this works. What I'm saying is that if, if you're selling and it's going down and they're buying when it's going down, it's still the same price that you're selling at that they're buying at. Like, just. Uh, um. Like, there's got to be a way to explain this that makes sense. Yeah. Because um, the price of the stock is the price of the stock. If it's declining, then it still is the price of the stock for the seller or the buyer. Yes. So how do you make money if it's the exact same price? Because you, the pips, and that's where the pips matter. Because, like, what is it you're trying to add? I, so I I get what you're, if you're saying. you're selling, you add pips. So you are selling, so you add pips, you automatically get those pips. Yes. And if you're buying, you lose pips, correct? No, no, that's for if the you spread. You buy and you add pips. That's for the spread. The spread you don't have to worry about. The spread you don't have to worry about, that's what the broker makes. That's the difference in price that you're going to have to pay. So it's like GST. You go to a store, you buy something that's 99 cents because there's tax, 5%, you're buying it at a dollar four. But if there was no tax and it was 99 cents and they're like, for some reason, they're like, hey, mine, save 10, save 5% off the price, then you're going to be mm -hmm. buying it at, you know? Yeah. So that's just some, another way to look at it. But for this pair right now, making money when it goes down is in long term, it seems like how do you make money going down? It's, it's just simple. You're you're saying my market analysis is telling me that price is going down and they're going to pay you for being right for price going to, to, to go down. Like, <laughs> cause all these traders for well, every paying me, um, the broker, because at the same time that you think price is going down, you have a bull or somebody who wants to look for buy positions. That's going to say price is going up. So, but they're not driving it up. The price is still driving itself down. Exactly. Exactly. So when you see... So, a, the, so the broker is giving me money. Broker being NVFX. Yeah. Even though technically they're losing money in the stock that I'm invested in? No, they're still making money because you would have sold it up here. And NVFX would have placed your order up here because of the spread. So let's say price is here. NVFX mm -hmm. would say, um, we're gonna sell it to you at a little bit of a higher price. But if you're right, you're gonna be making a lot. But if you're wrong and you only want price to go up to here, you're gonna be losing this much. So here. Um, so the broker pays me money for being right. Exactly. Because somebody else was wrong. Based on the pip difference? Like... No, based on this What I'm whole... saying is I don't understand where the money comes from. Um, like, What do you mean? Like, where does the money come from if what's being sold is depreciating? Where does the money, buddy? It's all fugazi. It's all fugazi. It's not even there. Uh, it's, like it's, I it's, want it's, to punch it's... you in your head right now. This is how I feel. Because I. Like... It's because there's the forex market is a six trillion dollar market. Money's yeah. always being moved, so mm. money's always being moved inside this market. Whether it's okay. you moving the money, um, another There's retail somebody, trader moving the money, hedge funds moving or a money, broker, whoever, or, yeah, yeah, or big companies moving their money. Money is always being moved, and so we make our money based off of the difference in fluctuation in price. Okay. 
so it's like like so, um, but but yeah. if you so if you so a sell order is you place it at a certain level to sell exactly and close out correct exactly yeah so if you and you're closing it out which means you're taking money before you take a loss but you can take a sell position like you said yes which you set it so if it goes a little higher you still close out and get the money of a little higher of what you bought it in at originally and you set it uh but you're assuming it's gonna sell so you set it at lower to sell as it starts declining yes yes exactly exactly yeah and now because you made a calculated decision that you knew it was gonna sell your broker just gives you money exactly but based on what pip like how do you so based on the small movement so if we were look at uh like just where this chart is right now so like chart it out because i yeah i think i'm on to it finally okay sweet so let's but go back to here i don't 100 percent understand where the pip percentage comes that your broker is going to pay you so price because that money isn't money that that anybody else is paying you except for the broker exactly which helps me understand this more yeah. and the broker is paying you based on a guess you made essentially or a calculated decision that, you, that made. you made saying that it was gonna sell exactly so because you saved them money they it, give you money exactly 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 yeah yeah and that's a good way to look at it because you save them money they give you money yeah because instead of buying and telling the broker, hey, buy more of this one, when price was actually going to go down, you save mm -hmm. them money. And yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. You better be taking notes because I bet you're learning right now. Yeah, I'm learning right now too, man. I just My brain just went fucking <laughs> right now. <laughs> you have no idea. I just had a brain explosion. But like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So... Let's back in this scenario, okay? Mm -hmm. So this would be the one, okay? So this would be the one. And well, this is what seller's okay. positions are, is losing a little to make money? No, you're... <sighs> okay. Um... <laughs> you gotta lose money to close it out because you set your thing lower than what you bought in at sell high buy low <laughs> you sell high you buy low <laughs> okay um and the same thing goes for the market instead of taking profits when you're selling high you can take profits um instead of yeah anyways <laughs> anyways so what you'll see i mean this would have been but anyways now what do you mean by a seller's position that's what i'm saying because when you keep saying the seller position i'm assuming you're selling mm -hmm. like here this is what i'm saying okay what i don't understand is when a sell where do you buy in when you're taking a seller's position um you can buy in at any time that you think the market is going to reverse so whenever the market thinks it's gonna whenever so, you think so like the market, you're telling me i buy in where the the green and the red are connected right there on the fucking yeah so you'd buy uh, in 120 120 point fucking five eight this or right some here shit. yeah no no go go up here we here i'll delete this this. What, this is what i'm saying go up a little higher go to the candlestick with the super long wick and right go here. to the where the red and green connect yeah so you're saying i should get a seller's position there yeah because that's the roof of the price and price that's the roof of the price and that's when it's going to decline though exactly and now you can so make... i want to buy what i'm saying is and reiterate what I'm saying. Yes. Because I am buying in when it's going to decline. You are buying in when it's going to decline. Okay. Okay. <laughs> square one now. <laughs> okay. You are buying in when it's going to decline. Correct. Yes. This is what you're telling me. So I'm buying a stock when it's at the highest in hopes that it goes down exactly yeah 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 exactly you're okay. buying a stock at the highest in hopes that it's going to go down yeah right because yeah. i'm going to make money doing that exactly exactly yeah uh, yeah it's just yeah exactly so they call it a long position is 
going up, short position is going down. So you're buying a short position in hopes that the market is going to go down. Okay. Okay. So I want to buy hoping it, at the ceiling, hoping it goes to the floor. Exactly. And now and I'm going to make money doing this. Exactly. Or you can buy a long position okay. once it gets to the floor in hopes that it goes back up to the ceiling. Which makes sense to me because that means that ever the stock is appreciating. The, the shit is appreciating, which means I'm gaining money. Ex I don't understand how I'm gaining money when it's depreciating. Because you're selling that stock to you somebody. You bought it in higher. You, yeah. You're selling it uh, lower. Exactly. Um, it's basically well, <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're selling that stock to somebody else at a higher price. So when price goes back down to the floor, they're taking the cost while you make the profit. If that makes sense. Well, I, uh, these these are matter what if it's going down? It's it's going down further than what I bought it in at. Right. As soon as it starts going down, it's worth less than what I paid for it. Exactly. This is more advanced advanced techniques. Um, and yeah, yeah, but I I need to understand this, Morgan, because I don't understand how I can possibly I'll... make money if I bought something. And when I start selling it, it's worth less than what I paid for it. And but you're making, I'm going to make money. Yes, because somebody else out there is saying the price is going to go up. So, so they pay more? They pay more while you're taking profit out of basically their wrong position. So watch the movie The Big Short and you'll understand mm -hmm. it. Watch the movie The Big Short and you'll understand it. I might not be if able I to explain it. I don't understand it. It, it. I get to punch you in your ovaries, right? <laughs> yeah, you get to punch me in my ovaries. <laughs> uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But watch the movie The Big Short and you'll understand it. Um and you'll and you'll get a better understanding of it. Um Okay. And you'll understand why shorting them how shorting the market you can make money and how buying the market is what normally people think you can do to make money. Um, is the only yeah. way to make money, but no, you can that, that's what it. I'm saying. Yeah. Is that to guarantee you like 90% of the population thinks the only way to do it is buying. Exactly. We're no, right. Can... So I understand, but, and then when you're saying like taking a selling position, that makes you, uh, a bear. Yes. Yes. It makes you right. A bear. And taking a buying position makes you a bull. Exactly. And then there's hedge okay. funds who are both bears and bulls. Where Which you, we'll never fucking see. We don't even need to discuss that because, uh, I mean, I guess it helps exactly. to know that information because it shows you, like, the giant jumps in the market that aren't real. Exactly. Like you said, they're they're fabricated. Exactly. Because they want to make But we'll never, be a, we'll never be a bull. We'll never... Or, sorry, uh, we'll never be a hedge fund um, bull or bear unless um, you somehow miraculously make bajillions of dollars. Actually, um... But I guess we, technically you could manipulate smaller markets as a bull. Exactly. As a, as a, or as a hedge fund bull. or a, it, Yeah. Exactly. So we have uh, somebody in our team who's actually does retail hedging. Um, and he'll, he just retail hedges because, yeah. So that's another thing for another time. So he, both, he has both a sell, and he has both a short and a long position at one time. And he'll hedge the market in between there. So he'll right. say he'll he'll put a he'll buy a short position at the very top, and then set up his hedges where his price goes down, and then as soon as it hits the very bottom, the the floor, he'll put a buy position and then start closing out his sells as he's placing more buys, and then he'll do that back and forth if that makes sense. So there is such thing as retail hedge funds, but that's again that's more advanced techniques. Okay. I just need to learn because I feel like I understand the, the buy and the the buy and the bull. Yeah. And now then I the... need to learn the sell and the bear. Exactly. Yeah. Which is what I need to understand because I yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because it makes no sense in my mind. Um but I guess I need to understand the pips and the way they work. Yeah. But you said the spread has nothing to do with the way the pips work when you're selling. Exactly. The spreads are only what they make. So price right now 
is trading between a dollar twenty and a dollar twenty. So if you were go out, if you were to go out to the store, you'll only see a dollar twenty for the price. You wouldn't mm-hmm. see the five seventy one. So if you were to buy something, um, you're buying five 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 or any of that shit. Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't see any of it. You'd only see the dollar twenty price. Now mm-hmm. with the pips, that moves up and down. So right now, prices currently um consolidating between a dollar twenty price is staying stable as we would see it if we were to go to store at a dollar twenty but at the same time price is going between a dollar twenty uh a dollar twenty three eight one to a dollar twenty five seven four so those are yeah. the pips in those moves and we can make money that way whenever those pips move up and down so now price you'll see comes back down and then comes back down to the floor. Now what you can do is you'll buy because you think price is gonna go back up and price will do its little dance that it's doing right now. So you're adding your own candlesticks right now. I know these are the, this is live candlesticks. I'm just doing a replay from like here. So yeah, I'm just uh, going back in time and then I'm going forward in time. Okay. Yeah. And now price is. And now price is here. So based Over off. Of, yeah. So based off of all of that, where do you think price is going to go? It's going to go up. Exactly. Price is going to go up this time. And price is going to come up here. And then what you'll know is usually three touches. You want to look for three touches is basically a good rule of thumb for the roof, the resistance or the support, the ceiling. So normally price will touch it once, twice, third time. It's most likely going to break through. And if it doesn't break through, the next time it's going to drop and it's going to drop hard because that shows you the resistance is very, very strong and they don't want price to go above here. Right, right, right. And that means the ceiling is the next to anticipate and the ceiling has already had one, two, three touches. So the next time it the touches, floor. yeah. So sorry, my bad. <laughs> the support. So, it's, so the next time, so the it su- has to at least touch the third time there. Exactly, and and once, then, but it it's either gonna go up hard or down hard. Exactly, exactly, and that's why we don't, um, and that's why we don't. Uh, what's it called? We don't. Uh, we don't. Um, on the third touch. No, we uh, we wait for the break and retest. We don't. Uh, we don't um, know what the market is doing. We always react to the market. So the market could do this. So the market come come up and automatically right away, most traders will be like, we'll sweet. Start buying. Exactly. But then the market is going to do this. It's going to break this touch and it's going to touch it again to make it the and new support. And then it's going to all. Yeah, yeah. Because it has to make a new base. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So the market is going to do that move there. So it's going to break it. It's going to break this floor. Give me one mm-hmm. second. No, see, I understand all that. Yeah. Like, I, I, underst- I, I understand that. And then, like, as I can see, that's up. But that's pattern recognition, the three touch on the bottom, three touch on the top, right? Exactly. Yeah. And then that's that's the point where you find out whether it goes up or down kind of thing, right? Exactly. And this is a 24-hour scale, or what is this? This is 15 minutes. Right Each candle is 15 minutes long. Yeah, but the the whole what we're looking at is twenty four hours. This chart we're looking at currently. Yeah, it's twenty four hours. Um, but here is each candle is it, now oh. is twenty four hours. Yeah, so each candle is a day. Yeah. Right, but you were all oh, okay. So you were looking at fifteen minutes. What happens every fifteen minutes? Exactly. What happens Let's every fifteen out. minutes? Yeah. So how does it go down that far in fifteen minutes? Each candle, Every is candle is fifteen minutes. Oh, yeah. Okay, so sorry from 
February, February 25th. This is what's happening every 15 minutes. Exactly. So we were at a high at like the 25th or whatever. Yeah. Wherever that is. A dollar 22. And and then now it's down to a dollar 20. Exactly. Where it doesn't look like it's a huge drop because it's only a two cent drop. But you can zoom that out even further. Um, or yeah. like go over to the left. Oh no. That's what I'm saying, because you have to look at that collectively, right? Exactly. You always look so, at the left. Yeah. See, see, see? I didn't see? even teach you that. And you're already figuring it out. Um so this I feel like that actually might drop, to be honest. Yeah. From what I feel like that might drop low and then start coming back up again. So where do you feel like it's going to drop to? Right where it's at now. I don't know. It might drop. You see that lowest mark? I'll give you one On second. <laughs> yeah, like February 7th or some shit. Yeah, so like right, right here? Right around that. Yeah, it might come maybe not quite as low, but it looks like. So like right here? Yeah, we'll say that. I feel like it might drop down to there. Yeah. I keep scrolling over, like scroll over far, far, far over. Yeah, I'll, I'll make it to the four hour so we get a little bit of more. Oh. So we're at a high right now. Yeah. Hmm. I could do the double dip right there. I'm in. But as far as currency goes, that's not going to break much higher than like 123, right? 120. Exactly. Um, Because currency doesn't do crazy jumps, correct? Exactly. It doesn't do crazy jumps. It'll go from like one. What's that lowest part again? uh, This part right here. 108. Jesus, what? Yeah, this was um, back in 2020 COVID. Oh, no, uh, 20, okay. 29, yeah, 2020 COVID, where price dropped the whole... Oh, you went uh, to yearly now? No. Or day? Daily, 24 yeah. hour. Yeah. Yeah. But so we're price... on the incline now, so it's not going to drop again. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. If I'm looking at what I'm looking at, the potential for it to drop a little more, I feel like it's going to drop a little more. Yeah. Overall, I, f- like, I agree with you 100%. And overall, as I'm looking at this too, I feel like price might go up to a dollar forty at some point soon. And no, I I think it's gonna go up. I don't think it's gonna go up this time though. No, but um, yeah. But I mean, I don't know shit. So. No, no, no. I I but track that and tell me if that happens. Yeah, I I agree with you 100. <laughs> no, I agree with you. I agree with you. And you think price is gonna come down here to where the spillage was before? And which is great because if you were to look at, let's see, if you look at it here mm-hmm. on the weekly time frame, you're going to see all this liquidity and liquidity is just, that's another concept that you'll see in advanced uh, traders. And it's great that you're spotting it now is because price wasn't supposed to do the spillage. Like you said, it's like when price holds, when you're playing guitar and you hold that note for too long. Yeah. Price wasn't supposed to do this extra spillage, but okay. price did do that extra spillage. And then they picked up a bunch of orders here and shot back up. Mm-hmm. So now there's a bunch of um, sell orders that they need to close off here. So now price will probably do this on the weekly. Just looking at it. Price will come down, fill up this fill in these orders this yeah. liquidity before going back up yeah yeah so that's why kind of wicks are important because they're also going to fill up this liquidity wick in this liquidity wick over here before okay. they completely yeah interesting yeah so as you can see price came down it came back up and now the price is going here. back down okay. I need to watch the big short. That's what I need to do. Yeah, watch it, um, and you'll understand shorting positions a little bit more. And yeah, it's on Netflix. It's a great movie, all in all. It's about the two thousand and eight um, uh, crash of the economy and how one guy predicted the crash and 
he made a shit ton of money doing that and nobody believed him <laughs> and so they were all buying they were all he, he, he was in debt like crazy debt his company almost went under because he was yeah. selling these really great properties uh, these really great uh, positions to these um, to these other uh, to these other hedge funds or these other investors and everything he was selling it to them at a really great low cheap price saying well if the market goes down you're gonna owe me 20 times that amount you're gonna owe me X times that amount and yeah and they're in and in his case if the market kept going up they would owe he would owe them X amount of money so he would kind of keep doing that over and over again and then eventually everybody was living life 2008 happened the economy crashed the bubble burst all this and now price yeah. just completely dropped and he made a shit ton of money we're talking like billions and billions of dollars by just Jesus. selling them and not just him um somebody got wind a couple people heard wind of what he was doing and they started yeah. doing the exact same thing they started taking a look at what was happening in the housing crisis realized that they were just giving loans to anybody who were walking in the bank just basically signing papers giving loans to everybody and nobody could afford it and then they started seeing this pattern where price where they started seeing this pattern where defaults started to go up um yeah yeah and everything like that and mortgage rates all this kind of stuff and people were just selling homes buying homes and eventually the market collapsed that whole bubble happened and like yeah yeah if you were to look at like 2008 let's just see if we can see it um one month um uh, 2008 the euro would have just jumped skyrocketed right before the crash uh no because the market happened in the states right the crash uh, okay, okay. so the euro was worth one euro at that time was worth like a dollar 60 us so that was a huge market crash for the us if we just look at the if right. we just look at the dxy because that's the dollar index fund and you were to look at 2008 right here like this is like before that giant bubble happened it was like hitting it was close to hitting all-time highs for the United States dollar, right? And then... Yeah, yeah. There was in 2000, that's when... What is this? This is... Sorry, what is this one? This is... The XY, what is it? It's the dollar index fund. So this just strictly shows where the price of the US dollar is at. Okay, this is just the US dollar? Exactly, just the US dollar, yeah. Which means it's gonna spike again yeah uh not before it sinks though uh, yeah no well i mean that's not like a accurate it's, it's i mean i guess it's, if history repeats itself yeah which i mean it usually does it's actually about to go up again yeah baby bro Not cooking. Give mommy daddy's wallet and tell her to go order boss of pizza here. Here. Come in. Thank you. On and on and on you go. But yeah, if yeah, if that's what uh if that's what you see that price is gonna repeat itself and it's going to spike up then yeah i can see that as well too um just looking off of here i could see that 20 we're in 2022 so like 2018 price yeah, like was I'm just going basically dropping like yeah yeah comes up 2022 and then 20 so we got 2001 we were mm -hmm. at a high 2021 is where we're at now so it's 10 year or 20 years no yeah 20 years and price just kept 20 dropping. years before that was would have been 1981 probably 1986 was when it starts it first starts charting okay and we what were i'm saying drop. is if you were to follow that 
mm -hmm. backwards, it was would have been at a high, no? Or were if, the stock markets only open in 86? Uh, it starts marking the charts at 86. Yeah, um, on this specific thing. But can you go further back in, in no, time? No, you can't. So that's when they like the stock and the foreign exchange and all that shit opened up was 86, correct? I would assume so based on this, yes. But so we, it would have been in a constant decline because nobody would have known shit about it. Exactly. And the and US when it grabbed hold. So still in a constant decline. When it when it grabbed hold it would have been eighty seven. Yeah. So boom. Pick a pick up I don't know, it might be on a high right now to be honest. Yeah. It's on its high right now. Yeah, it is. So and it's going to go down again. But yeah. I don't think it's going to dip too far down because it's still the US. Exactly. It might dip probably down to like one US dollars worth like 84 cents, give or take. But like, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Well, it's going to, yeah, it's on its high right now. So it is going down. Yeah. But then, um, but it's hard to say because it's kind of like, it's the U.S., so their dollar is always going to be worth it. And that's right where... Around there. Do you and know what I mean? So that's yeah. why I'm saying I think it might go up based on presidency change and all that shit, too. Based on that, yeah. And that's where this comes into place as well, too, using news sites like um, my FX book. Mm -hmm. And you can go to economic calendar, and you can see who's speaking or what news is happening that day. Mm -hmm. So anything that's low impact, um, anything that's low impact is just news that won't um, impact the market as much. Anything that's medium impact will have a small ripple in the uh, market and anything that's high impact, like today. Like European unemployment? Exactly. So today it had a really high impact in the market. So you would look at it. Okay. They were anticipating um, they s previously unemployment in Europe was at 468 but now it's mm -hmm. at 437 so that's actually okay. good news for Europe so you can expect that the the euro would go up just because and that's what would happen with that news because their employment numbers shrugged so the euro would be, could be going up right now exactly their employment numbers dropped so they're doing good um, versus if their unemployment numbers were up to like five hundred thousand, then you know they're it's gonna crash because the numbers are wrong. Uh, their numbers were higher for unemployment, and then you can see low news, high impact news. Um, okay. The president spoke and everything like that, and yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then there's uh, another site as well too. Um, market watch I believe it is 24 hour no it's not this one um, oh I have to sign in to this no you my don't have to book no you don't I have don't to sign in I... you just go to um, my FX book and I went I went to it but it's oh it should have this screen right at the front and then yeah. right, right up the top where it says popular you can click economic calendar that's what show I need you. to click. Uh, okay. Yeah. I said something healthy, man. I don't know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, what was the other one? Huh? <laughs> yeah. And then what's the other one? Um, Give me one second. The other one was um, Forex Factory. That's it. Forex Factory will give you, uh, it'll show you different news that is happening besides uh, my FX book. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm, fucking yawning. 
Yeah. Fuck you, got it. <laughs> Damn it, Morgan. No Play worries. No worries. <laughs> I'm gonna quickly just grab a bite of a brownie or something. Give me a second. Do it. It's brownie, what do you have? Six. Back, yeah. Back like LL. <laughs> oh, these fucking people, man. Um, what's up? <laughs> oh, hi. It's, uh, it's gotten a little quiet there. Well, I mean, what do you want? What do you want from me, man? I don't know. What do you want from me? I don't know. My guy? I couldn't tell you either, my guy. <laughs> you know, it's almost dinner here. Yeah. Do I'm wanna... still stuck on the understanding how to fucking make money when you're selling. <laughs> All you need to know is price goes down and you make money selling. I mean, yeah, I guess. And that's literally, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is all that? Why do you have so many things on there? Oh, because I have different charts for different things. And like for this one for Bitcoin, um, these are just different support and resistance levels and just marking it out and understanding what was happening at price at that point. Um, this one's just... And what about your Dogecoin? Where's that sitting? Doge? Whoa. Um, Doge right now is uh, still declining, but um, it's coming up to that part where it's starting to gain traction again in price. Um, so I should start buying right now. Yeah, so you see here, yeah, Doge, I could see, um, buy right now and just hold on to it. And if it does um, break this level here, then... You can expect Doge to do something like this. Um, where is it? You can expect it to do something like this. Come back down. I buy right now. Somebody's going to make money off me. Uh, well, this is where uh, you buy it on Crypto.com app. And that's more like of investing. You're still buying it at such a low price. You didn't buy it up here. 
with everybody buying it at like I know, eight I know, cents. I know, I know, yeah, I know. yeah, yeah. Eight cents, he says. <laughs> it's expensive. Well, so I need to go put money in, into Doge. Keep in mind, it's at like before it was at like barely even a penny, and now it dropped up to like eight cents. So yeah, buy Doge. Um. Buy so Doge. like, if I just drop a hundred bucks into Doge, that's a good, a good investment. Yeah, it's a good investment. Yeah. Because even if it hits ten cents, you're literally doubling your money. Your hundred bucks now is like, what, two hundred dollars? Yeah. Yeah. And it has potential to do that. Um, so now it says like on this, like where it says buy Doge, it says like um, ninety one fifty five for fourteen hundred. Yeah. So ninety one dollars. It gives you fourteen hundred dollars worth of Doge. Okay. So now you hold on to fourteen hundred Doge coins. So, but uh, is that a normal lot? Then that's what that is. Yeah. So it'll tell you exactly whatever the minimum amount you need to buy is. Which is the fourteen hundred? I'm assuming. Um, if you clear it out, it'll tell you the minimum amount you need to buy. But yeah. What do you mean? So clear get rid out. of get rid of the price. Like, fuck. Get rid of the ninety-one dollars, and it'll right. tell you. And now it says zero Doge is zero dollars. Yeah, and now it should oh, tell you on. buy a minimum amount. So put like a dollar. You want to buy a dollar worth of Doge, and it should say the minimum amount to purchase is like X amount of Doge. I think it's like five hundred Doge coins or something like that. Maybe. I don't know how to do that. Um, this doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, it's, let's... Not, it's not saying do a limited amount. Oh, me... clear. Yeah, close. Give me one second. Yeah, yeah. Hey. What's up? What are you doing? Um, just, uh, just going over some trades there. With Tyler. Teaching him what? some, what? going over trades with Tyler, teaching him some trades. Oh, is that the guy you were on the call with last night? Yeah. Oh, are you on a call right now? Yeah. So I was just watching you, like, on the phone with me? Yeah, basically. <laughs> what, do you want me to call you later? Yeah. Okay, just, um, there was, like, nothing to do today. I'm not sure. I'll try to call you on a ten if I take one. Mm-hmm. But you might want to be here by, like, shortly after eight. Okay. Or, like, eight ten, maybe. Eight fifteen. Be prepared for, um, an early pickup. Yeah. All right, I love you. Love you, too. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm back. Are you back like Yell Yell? Like Yell Yell? Like Little Yell? I'm back like Bobby Schmurda. <laughs> Out of <Bobby> prison. Bobby <laughs> Schmurda? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Fuck a motherfucker, you know? Yeah. <laughs> motherfucker. But yeah. So if I go buy Doge, it just, like, I can't clear. I hit clear and I hit close and then it just says zero dollars for zero Doge. Yeah. So, anyways, buy however much you want to buy price wise. And then when you hit buy, um, it'll tell you what to, what to, how much to buy. And Doge is a pump and dump coin. So once it hits a certain price, you sell a little bit, keep it, reinvest it once it goes back down. You know what I mean? Until it explodes, hopefully. Exactly. So you always want to keep a little bit of it. Um, it's uh, it's definitely a the beginning of its life for Doge. Um, mm -hmm. Like, yeah, <laughs> I don't know the project. Be I don't know the project behind Doge. All I know is it's a literal internet Reddit coin. So. If anything, if it does hit a dollar and people are tipping Doge coins out, it's gonna, it's either you're gonna be tipping out a dollar to those content creators and everything like that. So, okay, yeah, and I can just add my Mastercard right onto this. Exactly. 
Okay. Your, your master card. <laughs> My brain hurts. I'm gonna watch the big short tonight though. Yeah, watch it. It's on Netflix. Good good film. Um it's gonna keep you on your edge of your seat. Yeah, and then it's gonna have some emotional emotional parts in it as well too. Once you realize that what they're doing and what everybody's doing and how it affected not only like yeah it's great story this guy made millions off of it but at the same time you'll see how it affected the market because nobody could actually believe nobody actually believed him and everything like that and millions of americans were jobless homeless blah, blah blah all this stuff and lots of people lost money regular joes because they weren't you know and that's why mm-hmm. that's why everybody blamed uh that's why everybody blamed Wall Street for what happened. But in all honesty, Wall Street got rich because you didn't do your due diligence. You went in there, they offered you, like, let's say a house of like two, like, that's worth like 750000 Even though you knew personally you couldn't afford that house, you still bought that house. You ended up putting yourself in bankruptcy. Um, and uh, you ended up putting yourself in that kind of situation versus... Yeah, well- yeah. To be honest, it's, people are stupid. Exactly, exactly. Where right, if people want to point the finger at people, but it's like if you can't afford a two thousand dollar mortgage, don't go get a two thousand dollar mortgage. Exactly, exactly. And like here in Calgary, people were getting like four thousand dollar mortgages, dude. Sheesh, right, because yeah. the bank was approving them for that, and it was that oil and gas money that was able to afford that for us a, exactly. a hot minute. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And then when it crashed, you're like, oh, oh the gas crashed and we can't afford our fucking four thousand dollar a month mortgage. And like it, Exactly, exactly. So that's how we inflate our dollar, which then ends up depreciating hard as fuck, is by just giving people shit. Exactly. Yeah. Give people a bunch of shit and inflates our dollar. But then there is a crash to that because people a lot of people can't maintain that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So exactly, and and that's and that's what happens, right? And is what it is at the end of the day. Like, yeah, it's poopy, man. It is. Um, but people the are fact caught that people up in the... want to blame people about it, though, right? Is the biggest problem. Exactly when they can't blame themselves, and if anything, yeah, and, and it is what it is. They'll look for somebody to point the finger to, and at the end of the day, oh, it's yeah. That's what I was saying, and you have to blame yourself. So that's what. Exactly. Don't blame yourself, then you're just a dickhead. Exactly. You got caught up in the blinding lights, and because you got caught up in the blinding lights, you weren't aware of what happened, what's happening, this reality of the situation. And once reality fucking settled in and knocked on your door, it fucking knocked hard. (laughs) Well, that's it. You made a dumb decision, right? (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. It's like people don't people don't get that exactly like i said everybody needs somebody to blame that's what's fucking retarded about it oh exactly exactly and it's it's stupid it's is what it is and that's why yeah (laughs) that's why i guess you can't really get mad at wall street guys or anything like that it it is what it is yeah (laughs) no you can't because they're doing their job which is taking your money to make money exactly yeah but people don't see it as that right exactly they see like it people as people want a risk-free investment so re- invest in rsps then uh, investing in rsps it's funny because investing in rsps all they do is uh they just invest it in the stocks for you if you lose your money yeah. they lose their if you lose if they lose your money um you lose your money they like they're basically yeah, but doing they what don't we're doing. lose their money though right they don't um, usually lose money uh they don't usually lose money but um the return on the money the banks it's, make a lot more and you make very little right yeah yeah oh absolutely so yeah. that's what i mean is they're making a shit ton of money that's yeah playing with your money and giving you rsps right exactly like, they're basically putting it directly back into the forex market they're playing with it in the forex market that's all they're doing if you ever look at your phone or try to access your bank account between a certain amount a certain time for me i see it normally around nighttime um yeah. or like uh, around like one, two in the morning kind of thing. Um, you'll yeah. see that you can't access your funds at that time. You can't, the bank is under maintenance or whatnot. And it's because they're just playing with your money in the Forex market. They're making themselves more money. And then That's at the end, of, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> fucking wild. Good for them, man. Exactly. And now that you know the Forex market, it's like, that's the, you're doing what the banks are doing. You're learning that skill set. It's it's crazy. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. I hurt people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But all right. I'm going to sign off right now. Yeah. All good. You have yourself a. Uh... shuts off. But we'll, yeah, talk more tomorrow. Yeah. Talk more tomorrow. Um, what time Unless tomorrow? You're... Tomorrow, oh, my. Tomorrow my schedule's free. Um, but you're you're trading tomorrow, aren't you? Yeah, that's usually in the morning. Uh, first thing at like seven a.m. I I wake up. Oh okay. Yep. So seven till yeah, ten, but... and then, yeah, seven to ten, and then. Yeah. 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 Um. I don't know. I'll call you because I'm usually I gotta do my thing at kids' school. Uh, make sure the boys are at work. Yep. Um. And then I will. So yeah, probably I would imagine between eleven and one. Eleven and one, okay. But yeah. somewhere in between there would make sense because I have to work out, and then I have to. So let's just do cut it down the middle, and let's just do twelve. I mean, I'll know more tomorrow, because like today <laughs> I was ready to go at eleven, and then I fucking had. 1500 phone calls right yeah exactly yeah we'll we'll just play it by the ear um we'll play it by, by ear the tomorrow. ear we'll play it by by the ear we'll play it with by the, ear. the ear by the ear tomorrow yeah nope. we'll, we'll play it by... <laughs> whatever we'll play it by the ear <laughs> we'll play it by the ear um see how near the, the going. ear near the ear up the ear <laughs> up Beside the ear, ear. yeah insertion yeah <laughs> um mm-hmm. and then, uh, yeah and then we'll go from there and uh We'll call it a day. Sweet. Let's do that. Thanks, awesome. dog. No worries. Take care, buddy. Bye. Bye. How do I cancel the stream? I just you hang up. No.